Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. This is Ethan. <laughs> This is Felicia. Now today we have a special guest. He is going to represent the whole Riverside County. Oh, I'm gonna let him introduce himself. His name is Ron Edward,、uh, and he's been a pastor, a minister, a strong Christian.、Uh, please let's welcome Mr. Ron Edward and.、Uh, Mr. Edward, can you please introduce yourself a little bit and tell us which district you'll be representing? Ah,、uh, yes, Ethan. And first of all, I want to thank、uh, you and Felicia for having me on today.、Uh, it is my pleasure to be here with you guys and to speak to the audience、uh, that we have here today.、Uh, yes, my name is Ron Edwards.、Um, I'm running for the California State Assembly. Uh, that's District Number Sixty. That incorporates Moreno Valley, Paris, Hemet, San Jacinto, Riverside, Beaumont,、uh, Redlands,、uh, some of、uh, Menifee,、uh, Roma Land. It also has some Homeland, some、uh, Winchester. So it's a pretty large district. It、uh, incorporates fourteen cities, and those cities are all within Riverside County. I'm a first-time candidate. Uh, I'm not a、uh, one of these professional politicians. I'm just a regular guy. I'm a licensed minister, and I'm running because I love God, I love family, and I love my country. That's a great introduction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so,、uh, you you talk about what made you want to run this time. Can you tell us a little bit, like, what you want to change and what you see the biggest problem California、mm. is facing right now? Yes, uh, Ethan. Uh, California has a lot of problems,、uh, but you can't solve everything all at once.、Uh, one thing about me,、um, I have friends, family men, good men, men that love their wives, men that love their children, and they're all leaving me here in California.、Uh, they're going to North Carolina. They're going to Texas. They're going to Arizona. They're going to Las Vegas. They're running away from. Uh, California, and it's not just Republicans. It's Independents. It's no party preference. They're all running away from California. Just look at San Francisco. Look at Oakland. Look at L.A.、Uh, and it's spreading like a cancer all across our our state. So when I I saw these things going on, Ethan and Felicia,、uh, the Lord began to speak to me because I'm a, I'm a minister. So politics was a bad word to me. And Ethan, politics. Guess what? Still is a bad word to me. So it took three years for God to work on me, and He He changed the vocabulary. He said, "Stop calling it politics and start calling it government." So I, I don't say politics; I say government.、Uh, when I look at the Constitution, it doesn't talk about politics; it talks about government. And when I look into the Word of God, it never talks about politics; it only talks about government. And one of the first things about government. God said, "The government shall be built on my shoulders." In other words, the the governor is supposed to be a servant of God.、Uh, we see all throughout the Word of God, the government is built upon God. One of the great illustrations in the Word of God is how God Himself took Saul out of being a king and He replaced him with David. He said, "I'm going to replace this king with a man that has a heart after mine." And so that's why I got into the race because we need righteous men being in authority. Because when righteous men are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the unrighteous are in authority, the people mourn. I'm chilling. Yeah, this is like the best answer. A lot of Christians they hate politics. They say, "Oh, we don't get involved to politics." But I, I think you give us a very good explanation. It's government, yes. We, yeah, it's government. Yes, we、uh, like every Christmas we sing, right? We sing, oh, the government on Jesus' shoulder or something like that. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm still chilling. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what. Well, because we're planning an event, uh, in the San Francisco area, and then、uh, the topic is Christian shouldn't care about. Politics. Christians should care about righteousness, if it's biblical or not.、Uh, yeah. So, so what your this is actually a answer for. I'm still chilling. Yeah. yeah no kidding. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Oh, oh 
I literally, <laughs> you know, God is good. You know, the literally the word from God. <laughs> I'm, I'm still chilling. Oh, God is good. God is good. <sighs> this this is great. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, what policy you want to implement in the, in the government? <laughs> government. Yes. Yes. Well, well, you know, there's several things, but like I say, you got to start somewhere. Uh, and one of the things uh, I've been really thinking about that kind of got me motivated was children. Um, because I have a son, he's 20 years old. We raised him to be a Christian. He's a strong Christian. Uh, he finished uh, with all straight A's in high school, calculus two, physics two. He's uh, studying computer science at a uni major university. Um, so parents' rights was like number one. But then as I got to thinking about it, Crime has to be number one. We we cannot allow uh, criminals to go into a mom shop or a pop shop, uh, a small business, and steal nine hundred and fifty dollars out of that shop. There's no way a, a man or a woman can afford to live in California and do business in California if you allow criminals to just come in and steal nine hundred and fifty dollars. And and by the way. Not just one person steal $950. Everybody can line up at the store and come and steal $950. It, it, it's, just, it's just ridiculous. Uh, we're losing stores. Uh, where I'm at in the mall is, is just going down. San Francisco, Oakland, we see it all the time. Um, Elon Musk, he left California. That's how bad crime is. Uh, if they can steal your catalytic converters off your car, if they can steal your purse when you're walking down the street, you know, it, it's just, it's unfathomable how they allow criminals to reign. We have to have law and order. That's what God stands for. That's what Christians stand for. The Ten Commandments is all about respecting God and respecting your fellow man. You got to love God and you got to love your neighbor just like you love yourself. We cannot allow crime to continue. You're exactly right. But a lot of Democrats... They're saying that uh, they do this nine hundred and fifty dollar thing is because it's for black people. Uh, black lives matter. Yeah. They 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 wanted to uh, help black people, and the uh, majority of the prisoners are black. So, the United States, a racist country. What are what are your thoughts on that? Because that really hurts our country as a whole. There's no unity at all, and then we're just hating each other. What are your thoughts on like organization like Black Lives Matter? Yeah, uh, those, those are good questions, uh, Ethan and Felicia. And, and by the way, uh, the people that's using race as a weapon, they're, they're using it as a weapon. They're, they're using it as a tool to get that leverage to, to lift, to do the heavy lifting that they need to do to change this country. Uh, America is founded upon God. When you, when you uh, state the Pledge of Allegiance, it is one nation under God. Uh, they put it on the money, one nation under God. They put it in the courtroom. So you put your hands on the word of God, the Bible, and you you swear or you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, so help you God. It's all, everything is under God. So what these socialists, communists, and Marxists are trying to do is they're trying to change uh, the United States of America into a godless country. So they don't want you to talk about God. They don't want you to talk about, quote, politics, government. We should be talking about these things all the time. Now, when you refer to uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, they use these things like DEI, diversity, inclusion, you know, equity. We don't use those words. Those, all those words are lie. We don't talk about equity. We talk about equality. Uh, diversity it, that, it's just a lie. We are diverse. And then it's not just diverse uh, literally, it's diverse figuratively as well. So it's diversity of opinions, difference of opinions. That's what's going to make us uh, strong. Um, when it comes to race, and I'm an African-American, and then not just an African-American, uh, I'm an African-American Christian, so I'm a Black Christian. And so what God, one of the things God told me to do and prepared me to do is speak to my people. And so when, when I say, quote, my people, who is my people? Black Christians. That's my people. And so we got to stop <laughs> voting for men that do all the things that we don't believe in. 
five things I tell them. I say, everything we preach about, everything we teach about, everything we pray about, everything we teach our kids, and everything we say we believe, and then we go and vote for men that legislate just the opposite. We have to reconcile those things, and we have to stop voting for these Democrats because they're unrighteous, they're unholy, and they're ungodly. And then the next word I like to use is they're perverted. Uh, and the word pervert just means to change. That's all it means is change. So when, when a man changes the natural use of a woman into something else, or a man changes the natural use of a man for something else, you're going against God. So that's when things are perverted. They, they pervert not only sex, but they pervert righteousness. They don't have good judgment. Uh, they pervert the kids in school. So they say they're educating them, but they're not educating them. They change education into indoctrination. And so the word pervert, some people get alarmed by that word pervert, but I like to use that word pervert because the word pervert only means change. Uh, all change is not good. Sometimes people think, oh, the word change, change means good. No, you can change something that was good and you can change it into something that's evil. So we got to always fight the devil with words. The word of God is the most powerful thing in the universe because heaven and earth will pass away, but not one dot of the I, not one cross of the T shall pass away. Uh, now, when it comes to race in America, I, use, I talk about these things. The problems in the inner city, whether we talk about black, brown communities, is not caused by racism of a legacy of slavery is what they're saying. But racism is used as an excuse for inexcusable behavior. When you compare and contrast the black communities of the first 100 years after slavery with the first 50 years after the welfare state, then we see the culprit. Lyndon Johnson, the president, Lyndon B. Johnson said, we're going to keep these niggas voting Democrat. Number one in the black community, crime has increased. Number two, we have a two-parent family that is no longer existing. It's a single mom or a single dad. It's, a, it's perverted. It's changed from the way God meant it to be. The divorce rate has increased. Work ethic has de decreased. The guys say, go to work. If a man don't work, then a man don't eat. Personal responsibility is down. Good behavior has decreased. Discipline has decreased. Poverty has increased. Racism has increased, even within the own, their own community. Drug abuse has increased. Fathers in the home, the number one thing, fathers in the home has decreased. Gang violence has increased. The murder rate has increased. And man, we can talk on and on about having a father, having that strong man in the home. Your boys are going to look for men. They're going to be in gangs. Your women, are, your girls are going to look for strong men. They're going to be prostitutes. And this is what happens. It happened in a Roman society, and now it's happening in America. What an amazing answer. And this is what we talk about on our show every day. Have you lived in uh, Riverside County all your life? Uh, no, I'm from Texas, Ethan and Felicia. My parents moved here when me and my sister was young. And uh, then we moved to L.A. We lived in L.A., Compton, Watts. And uh, we lived in the hood. We lived in the ghetto. And then uh, my parents, they bought their first home in, in Compton. And so uh, then when me and my wife uh, got married, we lived in Downey, California as newlyweds. And then we moved out to Riverside County when we bought our first home. Wow. Uh, how much changes do you see uh, happen in your lifetime in uh, California? Because mm. from my opinion, I came to the United States about like 20 something or 26 years ago. And it has been a huge change for me. And you live here uh, for this long time. How much changes you, you see compared to when you were a kid growing up and compared to now? And is it good or is it bad? And did the super majority of Democrat ruling California make this place a better place? Yeah, uh, Ethan, and we, we always think about these things. I'm sure you and Felicia think about them. Other Americans are, we're just regular Americans. We're seeing the same thing. We're going to work every day. Uh, we're trying to put food on the table. Um, the, the key is family. 
And what we've seen, the biggest change that we've seen, Ethan and Felicia, is with the family. Uh, mm -hmm. The family is that that single cell, like your body has a single cell. And, and so it, it controls and it directs everything else in your life, in your body. The health of society is really based upon the family. Uh, as Republicans, we have a saying, good government starts at home. You guys ever heard that before? It, <laughs> there's, there's a, it, it's a saying that Republicans have, good government starts at home. And the reason we have that saying is because as a child, when you're born into that family, you have your first lessons in your, in your family. So uh, you learn to be a good citizen. You learn to, to be civil with your sisters and brothers. Your mom and dad, they correct you. They teach you how to uh, be industrious. They say, sweep the floor, make your bed, uh, take out the trash, cut the yard, wash the car. They're, they're giving you chores to do because they're training you to be that good citizen, not in the whole world, but within the context of a family, you learn all of these civil behaviors. So when we see the breakdown of the family, they don't have those civil activities. They're not taught. They're not taught discipline. They're not taught to go to work. To work. I, I taught my son this from a young age. When I was flipping paper, we would sit in the bed and he couldn't read. He was just a little child. And I would turn the pages. I would read to him, turn the pages. I'd say, okay, RJ, turn the page. Okay, now read some more, turn the page. After a while, he was reading. Then he was reading chapter books. Now he's reading college books. You see, so all of that starts in home. Um, we played sports, always played sports with him, baseball, basketball, football, because I wanted him to be strong, not just academically, but I wanted his physical body to be strong because we're just like God. We're triune. It's three parts of us. We're mind, we're body, and we're soul. So we got to take care of the whole man, and that's what God does. But the family is the number one thing, Ethan, that has changed in this world. Now, when you think about the black family uh, and black and brown family, especially the black family that came through slavery, guess what? The family was intact, even in slavery. They couldn't kill the family because they would take the babies from the mothers. They would take mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, separate them. They would take the kids and separate them. But the family was strong. Even in reconstruction, when they made laws and different things, Guess what? The black family was strong. Even in Jim Crow, with all the thing, things that was going on, the black family was intact. Even when the KKK and the Ku Klux Klan came along, the black family was intact. Now we created a welfare state in the 60s. Guess what happened to the black family? It got destroyed because they offered certain people money, kicked the man out of the house, we're going to give the woman and the kids some money. So you got money, but you don't have a father. Who is God? God is the father. And so when we talk about God to people and we say he's the heavenly father, so when we go to God in prayer, we call him father. So now we got a generation, two generations, maybe even three, that generations that can't relate to a father. When I'm saying a man that will treat you right, a man that will love you and you know he loves you. Uh, so they can't relate to a man that loves you anymore. So we saw movies and shows like The Simpsons. We saw shows like Married with Children. They always make the man look like he's a buffoon because yeah. that's what the Ooh. devil is doing. Yeah, the yeah. family. That's the number one thing we have to fix in this country. And it's not going to be an easy task, but that's mm -hmm. the task we have to do. We have to speak to the family, get men, strong men, to stay with their wives, stay with their families. As you're we talking about families, and there is a major issue for the coming election, a big thing for a Democratic Party, because they're promoting abortion. And what, what, what's your opinion on that? Because we know the Planned Parenthood, when they found it, and they, they're intentionally to kill black people. And now they're putting all the abortion clinics in the black people living area, and they kill the most black people <laughs> in this country. And now they're praising a lot of people. They're praising, oh, abortion is a human rights. What, what, what's your thought on that? No, uh, Felicia, you really uh, answered uh, your question as well, because 
the information that you guys put out, that is the reality of what's going on. Uh, we know the purpose of Planned, Hood, Planned Parenthood because we see the history of it. Uh, Margaret Sanger, who came up with the whole idea, she wanted to get rid of the those undesirables. You know, uh, that's what that was her plan. Um, we see a genocide. It's an actual genocide that's going on. It, it, it's really, it's in all of America. But when we look at the microcosm of the black community, man, we can see it so close up. It's kind of like a scientist that studies a gnat's wing that's flying, humming so so fast. He he, he gets those that microscope and he can slow things down and he can take those cameras and enlarge it. But so when we look at the microcosm of the black community, it is startling what's going on. It's an actual genocide. It's a genocide. And now they're they're committing abortion so much that look what's happening in California. Look what's happening in America. The 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 um the rate of birth, the birth rate is decreasing. And then when you throw in all of the other problems, drugs, um, you know, homosexuality, uh, people aren't getting married. Um, and that's unfortunate. It you to get married, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of hope mm -hmm. and trust because as a young person, you like you don't see it. You like I remember when me and my wife were dating, and we're Christians, and we kind of looked at it. We had been dating for a little while, and we looked at it. We're like, well, we don't have enough money to get married. That's why. And this was in like 1983 or whatever, and we're like, we don't have enough money to get married. We can't afford this. Can't afford that. And so then I think maybe six months or so passed by and Felicia, we said, we was at the same point. We ain't got enough money to get married. And you know what we did? We trusted in God and we said, you know what? We're going to get married anyway. And it's a wonderful thing that no matter what's going on in society with inflation, with the economy, uh, with uh, prices, uh, war, even in war, people still get married. That's the beautiful thing that young people, young people is the hope for tomorrow. Not, not as old people, it's the young people, it's you, Felicia, it's you, Ethan, you guys are the future of what we have here. Uh, we don't, if you don't have babies, oh, I'm sorry, if you don't have babies, if you don't, if you don't produce offspring and teach them to live the right kind of life, then we don't have anything. So the hope for tomorrow, the hope for America is in Ethan. The hope for America is in Felicia. It is wonderful me, for me to be here with you guys today. It, it is my pleasure and my honor to be here with you today. It's our pleasure and honor too. Right. It's, it, I mean. I got to give credit to Tony. <laughs> Tony yeah. introduced you to us. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your mind is so clear mm. and you know exactly what to say and it's all biblical and you care about your bible very much this yeah. is a, a, a glad to know you glad to know you yeah. and uh, for our viewers for um if you are living in his district this is a man that you're gonna vote for then who else you want to vote yes right this man is very hard to find even in our society right even in church yes hard to find a, a man <sighs> like you and I don't live in your district. If I live in your district, I'm gonna vote for you ten times and one hundred times, and I'm gonna make my cat vote for you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, we, hey, Felicia, we'll we'll do like those Democrats, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll steal other people's ballot. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my grandmother will do that, vote for you. She 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 died. <laughs> just right. dig her out, you know, and yeah, make her hey, vote hey, for you. Hey, Ethan, we got to beat them at their own game. So guess what? We are ballot harvesting too. Uh, so Amen put that out that. there to the people. Uh, all they have to do is call me, call that number at my headquarters, and we will get someone out there to pick up their ballots. They fill it out. We'll take it to the polls. Because as Republicans, we're, we're working hard. We have families. We have children. They're going to soccer practice. They're going to music practice. 
uh, whatever they're doing, that our kids are busy. So we understand that they have children, they have wives and husbands, mm -hmm. they have jobs. If they're so busy that they can't get to the polls, all they have to do is call my number and we'll get someone out there to pick up their ballot and deliver it to the polls. At the last but not least, can you tell us how do we like um, help you and how can we donate to you? Okay. Um, first of all, my headquarters phone number is area code 909-241-7642. Once again, that number is area code 909-241-7642. Now, I have a website also. The website is Ronald Edwards for assembly.com. Once again, that website is Ronald Edwards for assembly.com. I have an email address also, and that email address is fight apathy. I'm fighting apathy. We got to fight people's apathy, and we can talk about apathy a long time, uh, apathy. <laughs> but the email address is called fight apathy. That's F-I-G-H-T, apathy is A-P-A-T-H-Y, 105 at gmail.com. Once again, that email is fightapathy105 at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you. Last but can, can, can you pray for us? Can you pray for America? As, yeah, yeah. Can you, can, can you end, it with, end this uh, interview with the prayer, please? Amen. God bless you guys, and thank you once again for having me here. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Help us to be thankful, Lord. One of the keys for success is to be thankful, Lord. It's the, it's the praise. Before we do anything, we should get up praising you, Lord. So we, we praise you this morning, this afternoon, Lord, for everything you've done for us, Lord. Lord, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way, Lord. It is, it is you that give life, Lord. All life comes from you, Lord, and we praise you for life, Lord. We praise you for the breath, the very breath that comes from you, Lord. We have our being in you, Lord. Our ability to move comes from you, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you for the families, Lord, that are listening here today, the moms, the dads, the individuals, the constituents, Lord. Lord, we're praying for America, Lord. Lord, there is, there is nothing impossible with you, Lord. There are some people that have given up, Lord. There are some people that have raised their hands up in surrender, Lord. Lord, but we raise our hands up in surrender to you, Lord, and we know that there's nothing impossible, and we can speak these words, Lord, with confidence, Lord, because there's nothing impossible with you, Lord. And we ask that you bless Ethan, Lord, and we ask that you bless Felicia, Lord. Lord, continue to bless them, Lord, and let them be leaders, Lord, that they would lead young people to Christ because he is worth it all, Lord. Our very lives are hidden in you, in Jesus Christ. We thank you. Amen. 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 What a powerful prayer. Yes. Wow. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, God is good. God is so good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So go outside and mm -hmm. walk the walk talk the talk you need this guy ron edward to represent you if you live in riverside county uh you, you need his voice if you want to change california if you want to change your city if you want to change this country and make sure that we get into a the right path the path that our founding father founded on you you, you gotta get this guy in office yeah go I outside before he can before he can represent you, you would have to represent him to tell everyone, tell your neighbors, tell your church, tell your friends to go out and vote for him. And if you don't live in his district, you still can be his volunteer. <laughs> Just uh, you can see the phone numbers on our screen, the phone number and the, the, all the information about him. Just uh, call him, send an email to him, and you are being, being a part of this election. And the one day when we got November, we're going to celebrate together. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. 
All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you for this amazing interview. We need to find a place to uh, hang out or something. Yeah, yeah we, we're gonna celebrate. You know, we're gonna celebrate because God is good and God already done the great thing for us. And God is so good. And、uh, okay, this is today's、uh, interview, and、uh, we will come up another episode about His faith. I'm so curious, and I want to listen to it. I think you do as well. So we will see you next time. Bye.